Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Earning Our Stripes. I'm Brock Gordon. And I'm Benjamin Duncan. And as you heard right there, Burden went off with a nice punt return. As Ben, this is our debut on Elite Tiger Sports. That is correct. Welcome to Elite Tiger Sports, everybody. So you heard there, Luther Burden with a punt return. Mizzou got the win this week over Abilene Christian. 34. 34 to 17. Uh, Mr. Ben, you were there live. Uh, your thoughts of the uh, the game there in person? There in person, I thought um, uh, there were some parts of, of us that looked really well, but I think that we, we let ACU score... A garbage time more touchdown. Than we, more than we should have. Yeah, the fumble return and the garbage time touchdown, and it would have been 34-3, to three, possibly higher than 34. So Yeah, because that, uh, that uh, Brady Cook uh, fumble recovery into the end zone for a touchdown was the end zone right there next to in front, right in front of the band in the bleachers. And, um... He got lit up. Yeah. But other than that, he had a very good game. 22 for 31, 297 passing yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, which is the key for Brady Cook. Mm -hmm. He did not throw a touchdown. He is still pretty middle of the pack when it comes to SEC quarterbacks. You know what? I can live with that. I think you can, too. Yeah. Cody Schrader led all Tigers in rushing yards with 54. Brady Cook with 42. Nathaniel Pete 33. Cox, Young, Jones, Burden, and Harris all had also just under or just over double digits or just under double digit rushing yards. Receiving-wise, it was Dominic Lovett all the way. Seven receptions, 152 oh, yeah. yards, two touchdown passes. Burden, six receptions, 58 yards. Bannister, four catches, 44 yards. Schrader, one catch, 25 yards. Cooper, two catches, 25 yards. Young, one catch, seven yards. Nathaniel P, one catch, six yards. Touchdown on that one. Fumbles, it was just Brady Cook and that one right there. The defense did a pretty good the job. One, one, the one deep touchdown pass over the top from... Brady Cook to Dominic Lovett was probably the best pass of uh, Brady Cook's career so far. Mizzou forced a fumble, and also Mr. Ennis Rekshaw Jr. with a pick. His first career interception at the collegiate level. Luther Burden, four punt returns, 111 yards. Longest, 78, for a touchdown. He should have been returning punts from the beginning. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I know whenever everybody saw that he was returning the punts for this game, uh, we all got a lot more excited. Unfortunately, Mevis was no longer perfect on the year. He went two for four on field goal attempts. Long of 52 yards. Yeah. But he was perfect with extra points. That was that was rough watching him... Uh, miss those uh two field goals so the tigers that was improved. rough I, I was shocked with that the tigers improve to two and one on the year and get ready to travel down to jordan Hare to face auburn next or this week ben overall thoughts of this game before we get into the news about mizzou sports um, and such well i was gonna say um i did see that there has been uh some uh very under the radar uh, uh, roster shifting by uh, Drinkwitz over the past couple days. There has been, yes. Um, dur during the game, we saw uh, Sean Ketting start off punting for us, but then uh, Jack Stonehouse went in and was punting, and uh, it is listed now that uh, 
Jack Stonehouse is now the starting punter. He did pretty good punting wise. He had uh, two punts for 100 yards, averaging 50. And Sean Ketting had three punts for 91 yards, averaging 30.3. Yep. So. And also, just shout out to ACU's punter because uh, he punted nine times for 352 yards. Dude got a workout in, that's for sure. And also, uh, their quarterback has like the best quarterback name anybody could have. Maverick. Maverick McIver. Yeah. So Tigers proved two and one. They'll travel to face Auburn next week on ESPN eleven o'clock kickoff yet again. Uh, Mizzou's only being given a twenty eight percent chance to win this game. They're a seven point underdog. Uh, something we did not mention with the game against ACU, as you just heard my dog bandit there make his appearance on Earning and Stripes for the first time, is that this was the largest crowd in the history of the Drinkowitz era. Interesting. 53,253 fans. So, the fan base is there. They're showing up, even after... You know, the game me and you went to. Yeah. But some news going in to this game against Auburn. TJ Finley is reportedly out for Auburn. So. I did see an article today saying that um, uh, the defensive coordinator here for Mizzou, I don't know who it is, but. um, Blake Baker. Uh, yeah, he, he's been uh, having the defense practice for multiple different Auburn quarterbacks to be playing against. Which is not a bad thing. Yeah, especially with TJ Finley being out. Yes, so... There you go, so... uh, Auburn without one of their top uh, quarterbacks this week. As Finley uh, leads the team in passing yards, but he also had the most interceptions for Auburn. So, and for the Auburn game, uh, so the first it, for the Auburn game, the first of the two uh, mini Mizzou groups will be traveling to that band to, to that game for band. So. There will be Mizzou band people playing at the game there in Auburn. As it looks like it's probably going to be Robbie Ashford who gets a start for Auburn this year. 15 for 29, 245 yards, uh, one touchdown, two interceptions, sacked five times, 24 rushing attempts for 158 rushing yards, no rushing touchdowns. So. Interesting. A uh, bit of a dual threat quarterback there for Auburn this week, but again, it's nothing Mizzou hasn't faced already. So, mm. uh, that was not the only news to come out today, though, Ben, was it? That was not the only news. As uh, the SEC revealed its 2023 schedule finally. Finally. Uh, with that happening, however, uh, interesting development for Mizzou. So, in that case you correct. didn't know, this is what the Mizzou schedule looks like for next year. September 2nd, South Dakota State comes in. September 9th, it's Middle Tennessee State. September 16th, it's Kansas State, so revenge. September 23rd, originally Memphis, it is now TBD, Ben. That's correct. September 30th at Vanderbilt, October 7th at LSU, October, or my bad, home versus LSU, October 14th at Kentucky, October 21st, home versus South Carolina, off on the 28th, November 1st between the Hedges and Georgia, November 11th and 18th, home versus Tennessee and Florida, and they have it as November 24th slash 25th at Arkansas. 
It's going to be the 25th because it's the day after Thanksgiving. Exactly. It's Black Friday. It, that's when Mizzou and Arkansas play. But the biggest story to come out of that is Memphis apparently not being on the schedule for Mizzou anymore. Yeah, for that September 23rd game. And uh, you have heard some rumblings. Yes, I have heard some rumblings. And so apparently for the, the Memphis game, before they pulled out, I had heard today that that game that would be against Memphis uh, was going to be held at a neutral site, actually. That um, that game would be held at the Dome at America Center in St. Louis. Now, what team would make sense for us to play at the Dome in America Center. It's not like we have a built-in rival that... We had a historic rivalry where we would play there all the time. Well, see, the thing is, I, I was confused. Like, why in the world would we play Memphis there? Well, but I, I have been... Kind I of have halfway been, point, but... Yeah, but I have been hearing some other things that... um. Uh, uh, one of our uh, our great rivals, um, Kansas, might be getting slotted in there for September twenty third. That would not make sense for the dome. But it wouldn't be at it wouldn't be at the dome. But there is another team that is one of our great rivals that would make sense at the dome. Illinois. Yes. Against Connor Basilak, maybe. I didn't hear anything about that today, but that could be a possibility. Connor Basilak plays for Indiana. Oh, Indiana, my bad. Yeah. But uh, Illinois. I can't see us playing Kansas State and Kansas in the same year. Yeah. I could see us but playing. Like the, ru- the rumblings that I did hear was that um, we were going to play Memphis at the Dome in America Center in St. Louis, but then Memphis... That didn't happen, and then I heard that there could possibly be a KU game before 2025. But um, honestly, who knows? It's just speculations I had heard from other people on campus today. Um, but if we are going to go through and play a game at the Dome in America Center in St. Louis, uh, we could play Illinois. Maybe. That would make the most sense to me unless it's... Well, no, there's no one else that would make sense for it. Yeah. That's the only one that it could be. Mm Mm-hmm. I... I don't... I don't know. Like, I'm trying to wrap... I'm trying to think, like... Louisville, maybe? Even then, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, that's the only one that really makes sense. Okay, I'm looking at uh, the Illinois football schedule as of right now on uh, fbschedules.com, mm-hmm. and it's showing that, that they're playing the Florida Atlantic Owls in Champaign, Illinois, on September 23rd. A game that they could easily get rid of. Yeah. But it's- interesting enough, Illinois plays... In Lawrence against Kansas. That year? Next year. Huh. On September 9th. Huh. Nice little tidbit there. And they play Toledo on September 2nd. So, who does Kansas play on the 23rd? Let's see. Oh! Interesting. Who do they play? So, only the first three games are for sure set. But uh, Saturday, September 2nd, first game of 2023, Kansas plays in Lawrence against Missouri State. Then Saturday, September 9th, in Lawrence against Illinois. Then Saturday, September 16th, 
there in Reno, Nevada against the Wolfpack. And then to be decided or to be announced, it's showing at Iowa State against Baylor, against Kansas State, against Oklahoma, against Texas Tech, against West Virginia, at Oklahoma State, at TCU, and at Texas. So all those together add up to 12 games. So they would either, mm. they would probably drop that if, if, if. If Kansas was playing us in 2023. The Nevada game would be the one that would get dropped. Yeah, and that, that one's currently slated for the 16th. Yep, so. I, well, I guess we will just, just have to see what another happened. thought of another team, however. Who would that be? Looking right now to see if that would happen. They only have three games on their schedule announced. So, I will preface it with this. They are supposed to play Missouri in 2030. I could see them moving the game up. Because of this team joining a conference. BYU. Really? Yes. We were supposed to go to Provo in 2030. Uh, They were supposed to play in 2020. Obviously that didn't happen. So. And BYU only has three games announced. And that 23rd. The magical 23rd is currently open. I'm looking at a 2023 Indiana schedule. That's not And they only have the first three games. It's not happening. They're not playing Indiana. Yeah. Connor Bazelak would probably have graduated and gone anyways. They're not playing Indiana. Shout out to Connor Bazelak, though. He's He's led Indiana to... A three and O start right now, and they were the worst team in their division last year. I mean, by that same token, I mean, ooh, Air Force isn't playing anyone September twenty third right now. Like, come on, man. I would love for Mizzou to play Air Force. That'd be awesome, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. So. So you're going with Kansas as your most likely? We'd like to see it, but I know it's not going to happen. I'm going with either BYU or Illinois as my most likely. Or, you know, it could be uh, like a, a, a pit or an end, you know, someone like that. Who knows? Yeah. Hopefully it's SMU at home. God, I'd love to go to that game. I might be wearing SMU colors for that one, though. <laughs> or what if it was a B- the BYU game? Ah, oh, they can't do that because uh, September 23rd next year, SMU and TCU are playing. If it was uh, BYU, it'd be in Provo. So. Right. Interesting. Do you have anything else before we get into our... Uh, Normal song and dance that we do about predictions and such um, for the game. Um. Oh, they're actually selling uh, player T-shirts in the the at the Mizzou store in the student center on campus now. Whoa. The like okay, I think they're selling like four to six different t-shirts and i can only like for sure name two of those people because the others i don't think have ever started a game <laughs> okay because uh one they have a martez manual t-shirt that mm-hmm. they're selling at the student center it's just it's just like the number three in his last name on the back you know with the, the tiger logo on the front yep like above the number like the jerseys. Yeah. And then uh, they have a the Connor Wood version of that shirt. All right. 
than like the other players. I I honestly, off the top of my head, I can't tell you at all who they are. I don't remember. All right. Well, are you ready for the over under game? Oh, I am so ready. All right, Mister Ben. We'll start with Auburn. Over under twenty six points. Let me see. They're averaging twenty six points a game, so. Oh really? Yes. And Mizzou's averaging only oh, well, giving up twenty seven. Yeah, and Auburn's only played Mercer, San Jose State, and then Penn State. Yep. So, twenty six under twenty six. You're going under twenty six. Mizzou, thirty five points. Under. Under. All right. Total yards for the Tigers, four hundred twenty two. You said 422? Yes. Under. All right. Total yards for the other Tigers, the bad Tigers. We're going to go with uh, 400 even. Kay. Under. You know, you got to give, I got to handicap him a little bit because of the new quarterback. Yeah. Connor Bays, or Connor Bayslack. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Talking about it too much. <laughs> Brady Cook. Over under one and a half passing touchdowns. Over. Over? All right. He's averaging about that a game, so. And finally. Over-under, rushing yards allowed by Missouri, 204. Under. All right, Ben, it is now time to predict the score. Now, at the beginning of the year, we both said Mizzou would win this game. Are you still feeling confident about that? I still feel confident. All right. Because the teams that they have played against is not that big a deal, and the only game that they've lost is against uh, Penn State, but everyone saw that coming. So. Yes. so, the line, as I mentioned, Auburn is actually favored by seven because they are at home. Okay, I'll do one more over under. The the over under for the game. The over under for the game is fifty one and a half. Over under fifty one and a half total points. Mm, under. All right. What is your prediction for the game between the Tigers and the Tigers? Will Mizzou be at three and one, or will they go to five hundred yet again? Twenty four seventeen. Who? Who do you have winning? The Tigers. <sighs> Missouri or Auburn? Our Tigers. Okay. Our you, Tigers. You've got, you've got the good Tigers. He's got, so Ben's going 24 And I will 17. say, I will Dean. say, my prediction for the ACU game was really dang close. Mine was as well. <laughs> Because I was one point off in terms of you Mizzou, had... and then I was only four points off in terms of ACU. I think I had 35-17 as my prediction. <laughs> so I was off by one point overall. So Because I had 35-21. I will go with the Tigers, 28, and the Tigers, 20. Okay. With for a good old Tiger win. Yep, for a win for the good guys. Cause uh, backup quarterback. I don't know. Twenty might actually be too much, but again, our defense isn't. You know, our defense is whatever. 
So I'm going to stick with that. I'll go 28-20. Good guys win. Tigers will improve to 3-1. And, and Drinkowitz will be at 500. We'll get to 500. Mizzou football, their first ever win against Auburn since we joined the SEC. Which I think we've only played them twice. So Yes, and we've lost both times. Yeah. I mean, it's we haven't really played them that often, so it's one of those, okay. And, but, uh-huh. other than that, uh, Ben, you will not have a vlog this week. I may or may not have one for Truman State, since I'll be going to that game to go watch my little sister play in the band Ooh. this weekend. Um, I I may or may not do one for that. Might not. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but at least I'll have something to listen to on the way up to Kirksville, up in the middle of nowhere. And I can listen to the Mizzou game on the radio. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in going down to that game in Auburn, Alabama, uh, tickets are going for as low as thirty dollars right now. Actually, not bad. No. So, hopefully we both have the good guys winning this week. I have 28-20. Ben has 24-17, correct? Yes. All right. So, hopefully Mizzou will be 3-1 and one before getting their ass kicked by Jordan next week. Because, uh... Uh... It's okay, Ben. Just keep looking forward to November 12th when we'll... November 12th. What game is that? Tennessee. Yes. Where we will be heading down, so... We will be heading down to Knoxville. Knoxville. Heading down to Knoxville with the Tiger load. Woo! Yeah! So, uh, yep. Uh, other than that... I will. I was gonna say, Brock. Yes. Funny enough, last night I was looking at buying a, a Georgia Bulldogs jersey. Last night. No. No. <laughs> Just cause I. I. No. I. I. I know how that game's gonna go on October first. I'm sorry. I. I know how that game's gonna go. Listen, it's not gonna be pretty. Listen. This is Mizzou. We've done some crazy stuff. <laughs> yes. But I was trying to find a Brock Bowers jersey. Oh, okay. But for some That's reason, I can't find that anywhere unless I want to buy a $200 signed jersey. Ooh, yeah. So I almost forgot. Quick little update of the SEC standings right now. Uh, Mizzou, because they have no conference play, are currently sitting in uh, the middle of the pack in second place. And they are currently one of the two only teams to be 2-1, and one, but are one of the three teams to have only one loss. Georgia and Kentucky are tied for first, followed by Tennessee, Vanderbilt, your Tigers, the Gators, and the Gamecocks. They could have done such a better choice at naming their mascot. Listen, we're not talking about that. Meanwhile, over on the west side, it is Arkansas and LSU on top of the division, followed by Bama, Old Miss, Auburn, Texas A&M, and Mississippi State. No teams in the SEC West have a losing record. Only one team in the SEC has a losing record, and that is because South Carolina has played two conference games. <laughs> yeah. So... They got Arkansas and Georgia back-to-back. Yup. So, that's unfortunate, but as it currently sits, Tigers are still in good standing of making it to a bowl game. Hopefully. Hopefully, and maybe we will make the trip to the bowl game. I mean, if we go to a bowl game, no matter what, I will be there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Never mind. Damn. You and Tommy could come and see the no, game. No, Tommy wouldn't go unless Nebraska makes a miracle turnaround and somehow plays Mizzou. <laughs> no, 
No. Anyway. <laughs> in case you didn't know, me and Ben are part of a podcast called Big Time Talkers with aforementioned Mr. Tommy Haley. Uh, we talk a broader amount of sports picks. We did a top five this week in chips. Ben's list was something else. There's nothing wrong with my list. Mm. We also had an update on the MLB and NCAA and NFL recaps. If you didn't know, B. Carter Entertainment, we have a website. Uh, if you want to check it out, it's b-cardentertainment.com. Uh, we've got articles, we got videos from the other podcasts that we do. As well as Ben's entire library of YouTube videos. Which I think he's just now realizing for the first time that I can do that. <laughs> so, uh, we also have blogs and articles. Ben will be having one here in a little bit, will you not? Yes, I can probably get you one here by the end of the month. So, make sure to look forward to that, because who knows what he's going to have. Who knows? So. Ben, where can you be found on Twitter? I can be found at Elite Tiger Spores 1. Or if you just type in Elite Tiger Sports and look for the profile picture of the tiger with the flames in the background, that'll be me. Same one as your YouTube. And my YouTube channel is well, Elite Tiger they, Sports. They obviously know what it is because we're on it. <laughs> Yes, you're on it right now, but it's the the E, the T, and the S are capitalized. If you didn't know, how did you find this? Congratulations for finding this. I appreciate you listening this far. Yes, thank you. But also, uh, if you didn't know what the YouTube channel was, how? Just just how? <laughs> we have the official B-Card YouTube channel. It is called B-Card Entertainment. We have... Uh, the Sheer Shit Podcast, and we are not entertained on there. Sheer Shit Podcast is done by Miss Macy Shear, where she is on a tear of cryptids right now. Uh, we Are Not Entertained is a podcast done by Mr. Tommy Haley about professional wrestling. Yes. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Go check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv bcard entertainment. Uh, where hopefully by this point that this podcast comes out, there should be a live stream of some sort up over there. Hopefully. But other than that, uh, Ben, do you have anything else to add? Um, how'd your let's flag, hope. How'd your flag for, football uh, team do? What? How'd your flag football team do? Um, our rec league flag football team, uh, we sadly lost our second game in a row now, but, um, it was by far the best uh, game that our team had played, like, playing-wise and just performing better than we usually do. I I caught an absolute uh, just bomb to the middle of the field for a touchdown pass, and I surprisingly uh, outran everybody to score this really long touchdown pass, which was cool. But uh, we have our next game... Uh, Next Monday, the 26th. So hopefully we can win that one. But then also, um, hopefully uh, Drinkwitz can get to a career uh, 500 record At this weekend. At Mizzou. Uh, I almost forgot to plug the Twitter account. Uh, my Twitter account is at Brockwart99. The B card Twitter account is at B underscore card E-N-T, the B, the C, and the E are all capitalized in that one. So, until next week, unless you want to tune in to Big Time Talkers, which would be lovely if you did, but, you know, we're not forcing you to. We'd much appreciate it. Yes, uh, those can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. 
It's basically wherever podcasts can be found, oh. except YouTube. <laughs> and that's down to just YouTube not liking it for whatever reason. Brock, before we end this, though, I just noticed that the Mizzou at Auburn game will be on ESPN this weekend. Ah, uh, yes, because we have such a great track record when it's on ESPN networks. <laughs> at the 11 o'clock time slot. Against, yeah, anyway, on the road. Until or the next Earning Our Stripes or whenever, you know, Ben's next vlog. I've been Brock Orton. And I've been Benjamin Duncan. And slowly but surely, we are earning our stripes. M-I-Z. Z-O-U.